afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's session. As you can see on the screen, we have an interesting one. It's on formulas. Uh, yeah, I noticed someone somewhere mentioned that oh, uh, we didn't specify which formulas. Actually, she gave us the formulas she was going to talk on. Uh, so, but I will still leave it this way so that you get to guess. So it will make it more exciting. You know, you don't know exactly which ones we will cover. Our special guest today is Victory. Or Mavra, and um, I'm going to talk a bit about her profile towards the end. But to move on, uh, I'll, this session is brought to you by your Bizedge and um, MHS Analytics. And who are we? What do we do? Uh, your Bizedge is a training consulting. We also do solutions, but mostly what we provide to clients are uh, the training and consulting services. Uh, product side is still on develop under development. So if you need training on Excel, on Power BI, financial modeling, we are also starting SQL. Python we have it running too. So anything you need around data analysis space, just reach out to us. We will let you be aware of the classes that are ongoing and the uh, different models. Whether you want one on one in class online delivered, you know, self-paced. We have all the variations that you might be interested in. MHS Analytics is our sister company in Canada. So we also now have presence in Canada. And the advantage is that it makes it a lot easier to enrich our curriculum, which means we no longer just um, try to do what is what is acceptable in Nigeria, but also we are making sure that whatever we do and our curriculum and how we deliver our training, you know, skill you in such a way that you too can be globally uh, relevant and competent since our client base span, not just uh, Africa or Nigerians, Nigeria. So if you have any family member, relative who is, you know, outside the country or especially in Canada, you can re recommend us. Now to the main gist of today's session, you know, uh, let me just introduce first of all to you officially now our speaker, Victory Omovra. <laughs> uh, she's going to teach me how to pronounce her last name. She's a product uh, and customer support analyst. She's a data analyst. She's a data visualization expert. Uh, Nana, I see your hand up. Um, yeah, I hope it's not that something is wrong. You want to draw my attention to it. I'm giving you ability to speak. OK, so but if it is you want to say something, you can and you can put it in the chat. So victory, I'll share her LinkedIn. She's someone that likes to connect to people. In fact, it was a uh, it was very easy for me to reach her via the phone because she made it easy for you to find her phone number and an email so and she's got a very interesting profile i'm going to share a linkedin but just to pick out some highlights you know i decided to just put a few here you know so she's a let me grab i have three screens <laughs> so it's not easy navigating there so she's currently working with a very respectable company you know it's uh, one of the founders is someone i've respected for very long uh, Mr. Deji Olowe, I think I'm pronouncing his name correctly. So I'm really, you know, I know she will be doing a lot because she is the kind of the company going by the profile of the founder. I'm sure they will be so, so much heavily into using analytic data, fintech, and, and that's where all the fun, all the actions are happening. So we're going to learn from her. She's going to take us through a wealth of experience. She's good at teaching. She enjoys volunteering. She's also a data visualization expert. And um, I will share a LinkedIn profile in the Teams chat. You can connect with her. But now, so that we, sh we can enjoy what we have come here for uh, victory, I'm going to be leaving the space for you, turning off my camera, and uh, you can share your screen and, and take us away. You're on mute, sir. Okay. Okay, I've omitted. Can you all hear me? Good afternoon. Yes, yes. Perfectly. We hear you. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Michael, for, for bringing me here. Thank you for the opportunity to talk to everyone of us here. So uh, my name is Victory Omovra. 
I know some sometimes some people might find it hard to pronounce. It's omovra. Eh? Don't ask about the meaning, though. I won't <laughs> tell you. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'll move to sharing my screen so we'll make it as swift as possible. Um, so anytime you need something, kindly draw my attention because most times I get carried away with with my teachings. So I'll be enjoying myself and allowing others to enjoy. So it's, it's best for us to be on the same, at the same pace. We understand. So it doesn't seem as if I'm just on my own, on my own word and all that. So that's it. Can you draw my attention? So today we are learning advanced formulas in Excel. I noticed uh, Mr. Michael was like someone, someone was asking what are these formulas? OK, so I'll be bringing it up to us. I'll get to see it as it goes. So these are the table of content. The advanced formulas we're looking at today is the if statement, um, VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, XLOOKUP, and the array functions. Because they are much, they are much more, but I would want to keep it to these ones here. Okay, so that's that. So this, this, these are what we'll be covering. So first of all, let's let's start from the beginning. I know we know already, but it's best for us to start from the known to the unknown. Okay. So today I just want to start with what is a cell? What is a cell? Uh, like I wrote here, it's a powerful and widely used spreadsheet application that allows users to organize, manipulate, analyze data in a tabular format. It simply just helps us to make our work more, much easier, much legible for people to see and understand. And these data are presented in cells. That is the combination of rows and columns meeting together to form a cell. Rows are, um, they are horizontal, while columns are vertical. So that's the best way. And this cell can contain various types of information, text, numbers, or formulas. So that's it. So how can a cell be applied? Say data management, financial analysis, accounting, bookkeeping, data analysis and reporting, educational purposes. It goes on and on. A cell can be used for any type of organization because it helps to keep keep information in a tabular format. So that's it. I would not want to go over what each functions here are. You can go just get that done later on. So let's quickly go to our advanced formula. So I'll be starting with the if statement here. So I'll be doing more of practicals instead of just theories, trying to let us know uh, how this. Let's let's do more of the practical. So if statements are, they are conditions. They are conditional statements. Like if you want to meet a certain condition, like for instance, you uh, like what I like to do. There was a time I helped some students to grade. Instead of me to start saying uh, 70 will be A, I just put in the formula and Excel will run it out for you. So it's a logical function that allows you to test multiple conditions and return different results based on those conditions you've given to it. So I'll be sharing my screen on the if statement. So I think I should better still share on my screen because I'm moving to... I'm leaving, I want to use Excel for this one. So I'll be sharing my entire screen. Give me. Okay. Can you see this Excel file here? Yes. You can see the SFI. Okay, those, yeah. that's perfect. So, so we'll be starting with if statement. So for this one, um, we'll be starting with this very first one here, which is I would want to grade a a student. Like say anybody that is greater than so, they should be everybody greater than fifty will be greater than this. Then anyone that are lesser than this, they will be lesser than this. Are we getting it? So that will be our first one before we move over to the next thing here so we'll go over to wait once you want to put in a formula you use the equal sign here so this is my table here this is my table table of students the serial number student name the gender the subject the text the exam and the total so we want to grade them so we'll go over to say 
you put the equal sign and you give the you type the if before you finish typing excel will give you will prompt you and give you uh, a suggestion of what it is you want so you click on your tab on your laptop then it gives us three statements here first is the logical test so what are we testing what do we want to test here i want to test for the total like if a particular student total is greater than 50 it should say greater than 50 but if it's lesser than 50 it should indicate lesser than 50 so that's my logical test so i'll click on this myself here this this 65 click on it it will give me that at total so i put in my lesser than i type in 50 then you put a comma so that it can move to the next so when i put in my say value if true so if it is true if this if i'm saying if this my total that i just typed in here is greater than 50 what do i want it to be so i want it to be greater than 50. so when you are putting the text you put it in inverted commas so i said greater than 50 then i close close that and i put a comma but if it is not greater than 50 what do i want it to be it should say less lesser than 50 then i close it i close my bracket and click on enter since it's a table it will just apply to everything on that particular that particular column since the table how to get a table i just simply i just simply did Control a and Control t so it will just create a table for me like this so we're seeing it okay i think there's a mistake here what was my phone oh i gave sorry i said lesser than 50 instead of green correct sorry so i use a, a lesser than sign instead of greater than so can we see did we all get it on the call okay. yeah yeah you're still in yes we follow in so what's happening is most people can only access the chat temporarily for now so you might be my voice when they can't hear me talk. they can't speak okay they are muted yes yes they are mute oh. so that they won't distract okay. you but go on yeah they That's are all fine. So we see that those that are above 50 here. Okay. So we see those that are above 50, they are saying greater than 50, greater than 50. Then those that are lesser, like 40 is lesser than 50. So it's saying lesser than 50, lesser than 50. But to me, this does not really explain that much. You get it's not really explaining that much because if we are saying just 50, we're just using 50 as a benchmark. Like right? so, those that are 70, 80, what makes them actually different? going straight to this next one here which is uh, using this one we want to grade students accordingly like when we are in our school we use this uh we say 30 f 40 below they are e 45 d 50 c so let, let's use that um so we we'll go back to using our equal sign we we'll do the if yes this we'll go to total is lesser than 30 i think 30 should be f i think so draw my attention it's been a while i went to school <laughs> so i want it to be f yeah so that means if any student that I has 30 29 28 well, down to one sorry yeah do you have, i think f starts from like i think it's like less than 40 right is because if you have like 39 you are still f <laughs> So I think it's what, but I know it's for demonstration purpose. I, I'm just, you know, you okay. can go on. With let, the let's, let's make sure we are right so that we, we continue <laughs> we will not like pass that. the wrong students. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. So we go over, since this is a, a long, this is a long if. So we'll go over again and say if, we use our if, go back to the total is less than, let's say 45. And it will be E. So we'll go again, put in our if, if total is less than, are you sure we are correct? 
I think I so. I think uh, less than 40 F, less than 45 E, less than 50 D, then less than 60 C, less than 70 B, then greater than okay. 70 F. That was the way let, they let, let's, let's, let's be going like that. Let's be going like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if it's less than 60, so I've, okay, we'll use the C here, give a comma. Go over to your if again. If our total is less than 70. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Sir. Ah, you, you went to school, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if it's less than 70. So that is from uh, from 60 down to 69. They are B. They are B. So, so if all these ones are within this range, then the others, they are to be A, that's from 70 and above, A. So we close our brackets. Since we've added so many brackets, we have to be very sure here. So you see your last, the black, as the black color of your brackets. You know that, okay, yes, we are at the end of our brackets because if you leave it at just one, two brackets and you've not completed it, it will run an error. So we click on enter. What have I done? See, there's a problem. I hope I'm not doing anything wrong. So, if total is less than 60, what is missing? Okay. The one for 70, yeah. I see that there is a there is a less. Yes, down I've, I've, I've checked okay. it now. I've checked it now. Yes. Oh. Check it now. I added, I added a lesser sign first before then. So this is it. So it has, it has graded this one first, and this is far, far better than this greater than 50, greater than this. so 65B, 64B, 70A, 85A, 40E, 50C. So are we getting it? So this one just make your work easier. Instead of going forward to say, eh, okay, so what did the learn is called? 64, 64 B, you now start typing. Just put in your formula once and you go and rest. And you rest like that. So this, this is basically it for if statement. There are more, there are more. Just bring up your logic statement and just think, and you go over your formula and see how you want it to be. How do I want to be this thing? If it's not B, if it's one, two, just know what it is you'll be. Looking for so the next is our V lookup and V lookup is is also known as virtual a uh, vertical lookup vertical like we said we say verticals are columns so vertical lookup which is V lookup is a function that is used to search for a value in the leftmost column in the leftmost column so we'll be using our V lookup table so it searches for 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 information a value here left this is our left hand side the left column, and it gives the corresponding value from your specified column. So if you say you want to get uh, any any information from your fifth column, from the sixth column, or this, it will give you information from there if you only specify it. So what we do, you must know the arrangement of your column. So like this A is one, B two, uh, country is three, product code is four, sales channel five, so on to the last one. So V lookup formula is you put remember to put our equal sign. You type in your V L before you complete it. It will just give you the formula you are looking for. So you see what it's saying. Say it looks for a value in the leftmost column of a table and returns a value in the same row from a column you specify. So by default, say the table must be sorted in an ascending order. So let's go over to our calculations. So remember to click on your tabs. So what is my lookup value here? So I want to be looking at my distributor IDs. Then I want to be searching for uh, the quantity each distributor ID got. So for VLOOKUP, you can you can reduce it to just one. Probably just want to look at a uh, distributor ID 23304, which is this row four here. Uh, then you can type in, you just click on that particular cell. But for me, what I like doing is, in case I would want to go uh, uh, down down that particular column, down that particular column, that is from um, row two, row three, row four, row five, so on and so forth. So I don't want to specify 
each of those particular cells. So what I simply do, I can just click on an empty cell here, say L4, click on my comma, table array, that's the name of my table, or what was the what what are we taking where are we taking this particular thing from this formula this table from so you can click you can quickly just highlight that is you select your your data you select everything down to the last one but what i simply did is to make sure i arrange my my air uh, I arranged everything in a table and I created a table and named that table. I told us how to create a table. You control A, a light, and you control T. So making it a table. So and I, I gave it a table name. Let me let's let's simply do that. Let me simply show you. So if you click on any cell here, it takes you to design. You see that the name of my table is data. I named it data. So we'll be using that. So let's go over to what we're doing. So go back to VLOOKUP, click my empty cell, give a comma, table array, like I told you, that's the name of your table, or where are you getting information from? That's from, uh, let's say, A2 down to, depending on where my set ends, maybe J, J100, J122. Well, I already named it, so I'll just simply type the name of my table, which is data, it's already here. Click on your tab. So it's already highlighting my, my 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 data here is already alighting the table for me. So I click on my comma. So what are we looking for? I say I want to know the the quantity sold, the quantity for each distributor. So that's on what particular column? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's on my eighth column. So I write in my eight and put a comma. Then what is my range lookup? Do you want it to be approximate match or you want it to be the exact match? I want it to be exact match. So I scroll down and click on my tab and I close my bracket and click on it. It will run like an error for us. Fine, because we did, there is nothing here. You understand? We know we just clicked an empty cell. But I want to search for, uh, because I want it to, I don't want to limit it to a particular customer ID, a particular distributor ID. So I want to search for uh, my distributor ID, let's say two, three, three, I can always come here and copy it, you know? Come here, copy it, just copy, I want to look for this. So I go over to that cell, Ctrl V. So this is it, it gave me 166. So if we go down here, you find that this is the quantity, 166. So remove it. I want to search for, let's say, uh, distributor ID 17 here. I click on Control V. One or two. But if you just see why I like, I don't want to limit it to a particular ID. So that in case I want to search, I want to go down that particular column. I can always be flexible. Unlike just choosing a particular distributor ID and it will just give me the V lookup of that particular distributor ID. So this is our virtual lookup. I hope it is clear enough for us to understand. Remember, V lookup, you, you click on the cell you want to check. You click on the, the particular uh, ID or the particular information you want to search for. Then your your the, the data as the alighting from your, where, where those your information are found from A2 down to J50, or simply just create a table and just name that table. So that when you just type in your table to come, then where is this particular column located? What are you searching for? What's the column? Is it column five or column three, column four? You give your comma and you search either for true or false. True is approximate, while false is the exact match you close. And that's it, chicken. So let's go to uh to the next one, um, which is the H lookup. So H lookup, just like V lookup, V is vertical as down the column, Y H is horizontal lookup. So it looks for number across a particular row, across a particular row know that so that's the difference it looks for a value across a particular row so what it does is it search for a value in the topmost row 
that was one of the limiting things about V lookup and H lookup. So they are limited. So it just searches for a value in the topmost row of a table and return a corresponding value from a specified row. You will specify, okay, uh, I want to search for the row, row 15 for the information down that row. And that's how you do it. So um, so let's go over there. Let, let's, let's, let's take a look at uh, information here. So in bar, a call sign. So you type in your H. So it said it looks at value in the top row of a table or array of values and returns the value in the same column from a row you specify. So you click on it. So my lookup value, probably I want to search for a particular uh, distributor. I'm looking for somewhere Ayala or let's say Tadmark. So this man here, Tadmark. Okay, I'm coming. I'm coming. Okay, so that mark is in. Um, I'm very sorry. Something came up. Is in the row. Should be in row 14. So just like the way I did for my V lookup, I just prefer clicking an empty place here. Then give a comma table array like we stated. The name of my table is data. You separate it with a comma, row index number. I think that should be in row row 14. Let's count. Let, let's be sure. Let's be sure. Boys 14. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So it's in our row 14. Yeah. Okay, so then um just like VLOOKUP, do you want the exact match? Yes. You close. Then you click on enter. It will run that error. Or you simply do. So you go back. So like you said, it's limited. It only help. It will only search for that particular thing where you're giving data from the topmost, the topmost row. So let's let's click on Devin Abbott. I hope I'm correct. So he has given us for third mark. So if you want to find that, okay, so which country is third mark located? Third that mark is in Iceland. So that's it. So find that the month so so there. What did I press? Okay, so what was that for? So that's it. But one thing uh, about this um, V lookup and H lookup is a limited to just imagine the stress, just having to limit it for just the topmost row. That's why when X lookup came up, came came about, it it was it is preferable. But my Excel does not have X lookup, so we'll be using. Um, my Google Sheets, We're using my Google Sheets for that. So the explanation is say this function search for the value in the row of a table and returns the corresponding value from a specified row. So X lookup. So although this might look a little bit complicated, might because of the so many, many syntax here, X lookup, the lookup value, the value you want to search for, lookup array, the data involved, the return array, if not found match mode. Most times you really do not need this if not found match mode. Most times, but sometimes it depends on what you want. So the explanation of those arguments, say the value you want to find in the lookup array. What value? What are you searching for? So the lookup uh, array is the range array where it says searches for the lookup value. So where can you find this particular lookup value? It's in the lookup array. That's from where this data is located. Then the return array. So say the range array from which a cell retrieves the corresponding value, where you find a match for that lookup value. If not found, what do you want it to do? If found, what should it do? Just little, little addition. Then then match mode, you want it to be exact or near exact, prefer it to be exact. Exact is zero here. So we'll be going over to X lookup using my 
Google Sheets. So these these are the table here. And um, so I just simply created the same thing, the ID, gateway, and the count. So unlike HLOOKUP, that is horizontal, then uh, VLOOKUP, that is vertical, X, just like the symbol X, it cuts across both the column, both the row, that's how it is. So probably I want to search for my ID 9 here. I want to find both the gateway response and the count together. So what do I do? I simply type in my formula, X lookup and enter. So says key, I'm searching for this here. So lookup range, lookup range, so I'm looking for read here. I guess I hope I'm correct. Look up range. Look up range. So what's my result? I'm coming. Oh. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh. Okay, so I'm searching for my ID. So what where, where am i searching for this particular id number nine from is from this particular column this particular column that's from this id let's cancel it please uh -huh. okay so let's start again i'm very sorry so that was one of the things about excel sometimes you seem as if you've gotten it over don't worry <laughs> so where am I searching for this? I'm searching for this ID, this ID9. I'm searching for it here in this particular A column because ID9 is located in this. This 9 is located in this particular column. So oh, I'm trying to look for my arrow down. No, okay, okay. So I don't want it to start from AA because the A1, the A1 has ID there. It doesn't consist of the numbers I'm looking for. So I guess it started from A2. A2 down. So uh, then my result range, where am I searching for it from? So B2. I hope this thing is explanatory enough and I hope I'm not just running ahead. I really hope so. Then I close my bracket. So I want to search for ID9. I want to get both the response of that particular ID and the counts. So I close my bracket. So it's saying ID9 has invalid number, invalid number with a count of 55. So let's search for ID9. Yes. So this is it here. So it has an invalid number. So you can just go on and on. I simply do. So, okay, what if I want to find for ID 7? Click enter. So let me drag. You go over. You're seeing the plus sign. Go over there. It will give you 7. Uh, victory. It will just be giving you like that. Okay, I want to find for 8. Victory. Go Are you there. Drag. So on and so forth until you get down to where you want. Is someone saying something? Yes, yes. So there are two questions. Okay, uh, okay. Yes, one question is by Anye. Don't worry, I'll read. Okay, you want to check it? You can also check the question. So there are two already. For me okay, all right. Then. So one question is by Anye. I don't know if I pronounce his name well, but so the question is already the way he has written it. So he's saying, what is the difference? Let me just open it here. What is the difference between all these lookups we are doing and you simply just doing control F to find what you are looking for? <laughs> okay. Um, and the difference here is, um, uh, let's say for instance, you want to find a particular person, like uh, let's say control F. Sometimes you might not even get the actual thing you are looking for. And just like it here, it will not even be producing the right table like I'm doing here. This seems more better 
more final like i click on my five i go down here do not oh no it will not give me your control f will not give you both column this this gateway response and also the count it will just give you what you are searching for you get and control f caught there uh, um this vlookup it cuts across different sheets not just a particular sheet because i'm just doing an example here using a particular sheet i can click on a new on a new on a new sheet here and i'm looking for a value from this particular place here you get like if i want to search for this id six here probably bring in the things that i want from this table here probably i just need from one to six and the count here instead of creating it in this this place this box here you can go over to this sheet and replicate it putting your id gateway then i'm um, putting my my count go over to my x lookup use my equal sign okay, let's say i'm using seven um i'm coming i'll go back to his question let's look up so what am i looking for here seven i'm searching for it from so so let's go i'm searching for it in this searching for it from okay a to uh, so what do i want to use it for so you see but if for instance i say control I say control F and I'm finding five, zero of zero, because the table is not located here. You cannot find anything for you here. So are you, are you, are they getting it? So F is limited to a particular thing, but your lookup, it helps you to arrange it across different sheets. So I cannot find five here because there is no five in this sheet, but I can search for five using my lookup from that other sheet. And get it in this particular sheet. So I hope it's clear enough. Okay, thank you. Uh, shall I read the second question? Okay. All right. So the second question is by Nana. So she's saying that uh, with all what you said about the H lookup, X lookup. So if there is X lookup, why then is there a need for V and H lookup? Okay, that okay, thank you very much. That's because um uh, is is an upgrade. The way you had chat GPT and chat GPT 3.5, one was there before there was an upgrade. So they had V lookup and H lookup before they said, okay, instead of us limiting it to just horizontal, instead of us limiting it to just H. Why can't we just go across? Someone says, this thing is stressful. Let's look for a way and so that we can cut it across both column and uh, before you know, they might even come with P lookup. <laughs> so it's increasing, you understand? So instead of, because uh, just like excellence, just because this thing is good today, doesn't mean you should not look for a way to better it. Because if you if you keep waiting, someone else will do it. So. There was H lookup, V lookup before X lookup came. You see that I could not use my Excel, my Excel because my Excel is an old format and it does not support X lookup. If you see, if I type in equals to XL, it will not bring anything. So because mine is an old, old version. So X lookup just came out newly because they really need to upgrade instead of us restricting ourselves to just a column or just a row. Why can't we just go across both columns and rows? So that's it. Is that clear enough? Yes, yes, thank you very much. You can carry on. So those were the questions that were outstanding. Thank you. Okay. So lastly is the array formulas. And um okay, just like just like this X lookup in here, array formulas is not supported in my own uh, Excel file because it's an advanced one. I don't have it yet. 
So it's simply instead of doing your normal, uh, let's say five times four. Let's let's use this one for instance. Let's let's go to my table, my query result here. Instead of going to say uh, two times, instead of doing two two. Uh, instead of doing this table, let me use my equal sign this. Then you do your multiplication by this. Uh, oh yeah, bam, to fill it like that. So, so you see, it already suggested it. It's for me to just click on it and align it like that. Okay, why can't you just do a simple formula using our array functions? So, our array functions helps us to to do a a particular calculation all at once, especially things that involves multiple calculation like a1 um, to a5 multiplied by b1 to b5 or better still let's just multiply it across the board from beginning down to the end like that let's just do it or we sum it or we do an average or just anyone you want it but we just want it across a particular set instead of doing it manually this times this this plus this plus this and sometimes it might lead to it might lead to error and two another way why it's better so that in case they go down our sheet let me let me cancel this in case they go down our sheet and someone just add a particular particular information across it like okay so my id listen you are, I'm, I'm taking you down you are just flying where are you flying to so instead of, instead of going put it 27 you now start doing your multiplication again you meant you put it and you already you already did an array formula, an array function from the beginning. The moment you put it immediately, it will just help with the calculation instantly. So let's see this. It will come back to this again. Um, and, um, so use our equal sign array, array formula. So I want to. Sorry. So my A2, so I want to do a multiplication of this and this. So let's wait for it. Okay. So it has given us this calculation. So it has done the calculation, has done the multiplication, this and this, this, this A, A and the C. It has given us the exact calculation. So for zero, 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 zero. So that it's waiting for an information that you want to fill it with, for instance. But it, it doesn't mean you should do, you should drop in your calculation. You know, particular sheets. You know what you want to do here. If you know you want this, a, uh, that's A28 and C28, ensure you stop it there. But if you know you would want to use it, this is this is something you'll be doing often, like you'll be adding more to it. A particular customer or something, you'll be adding it there, and you don't simply go, let's say, um, count, I want it to be five. First, so instantly, I'm giving you the calculation for this particular row. This 27, you have done the math 27 times five instantly. So, if you want to add, as long as you are there, as long as this this formula remains the one at the top, it's good. If you want to change the formula, you don't, you no longer want a want a multiplication. You want a sum, or you want an average, or anything. Just the moment you get it, we correct itself from you. So, so that's basically it. There are so many, many, many things you can do with it. And this brings us to the end of our class today. Thank you very much for listening. I hope it was simple enough. I so any question, we wrap it up. So can I stop sharing my screen or? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so Mr. Me... Michael. 
Thank you. Thank you. Okay, great, great. Thank you. So I have two questions, and if other people have questions too, please. Uh, this is the opportunity to fire victory with questions. So she's we are we have her for the next 10 minutes all to ourselves. So question number one is um by the way, the two questions I want to ask you are questions we ask everybody. Uh, so in our community, it's a mixture. We have people who are new, who, you know, we could say they are the beginner, the enthusiast stage of their learning. And then we have some people who are already far along. They just want to keep in touch, you know, make sure that they are not missing out from anything new and learn other people's style and maybe learn you know, a few new things. So this question that I have is mostly for people at the beginner stage. They are the ones who like to hear from someone already, you know, like you already in the field of this data analysis, not just as um, someone that have it on their CV, but actually someone that does what they do day in, day out. So question number one is, uh, how did you start your own journey? You know, what was the unique way you went about getting into this space? Because we all know, I don't think in Nigeria there's any university course that strictly prepares one for data analysis the way it is done in the business world. So how did you make this transition? How did you start into this field? <laughs> all right, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I like the question. Because a lot of people have been asking, like, they'll be like, how can I find my tech field? How do I know this thing is for me? I don't know calculation. I'm not a statistics person. I'm not this. I think, first of all, there's no, there's no, there is no way as a human being, there must be, there is a passion for something for you. And for me, I like, I like things that involve me finding a problem and giving an adequate solution to it. You understand so like you know data analysis has to do with okay me there is a number there are just numbers here how can i make sense of this particular thing so when i i think i, I thought I'm, I'm thinking i saw a post where people like ah you can make sense with data analysis you can make your nonsense from uh, you can make sense from nonsense from with data analysis i just I, I i guess it was from youtube i was just seeing i just saw an advert like that and i was just seeing the way the person was giving a talk about I was like ah this thing is nice though. So that has had my passion started. So I, I went and I browsed out, okay, what, what, what is this data analysis we are talking about? What is this data? For some person, they think probably well, data analysis is like um, someone that, that is in charge of selling your charge card or, oh God, or doing subscription. <laughs> so so I just wanna, and when I researched on it, I, I enjoy it. You know, when you are learning data analysis, you might not really know the extent to reach to how sweet data analysis is until when you actually, when you get into the work field or when you do a, a full project. For instance, there was one thing I did in my company. You know, people will come, okay, we need loan. We're noticing that some people, they apply for loan and they are not getting the loan. They are complaining. Just getting the figures from those people, the number of people that applied for loan, why did they not apply for loan? Then finding out, doing an analysis, doing visualization, we found out that, ah, okay, so there's a reason why these people are not getting loan because of this particular thing. So what if we change this thing? And see, you understand? So it gives a room for you to ro test, run a particular thing. After much, after analysis, I start finding okay with these numbers. I find out okay, this so 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 number are now getting this, or these numbers are getting it. Then how can we make it better? That's the beautiful thing. It's not to run all this VLOOKUP or calculation. Okay, you find out that uh, the, the, the this particular loan is not working. Yes, you find out okay, the reason they are okay. How can you make it better? That's the beautiful thing about data analysis. I found the problem. Yes, then what's the solution? How can you make it better? That's that's the beautiful thing about it. Then giving this solution, and you at the end you find out that, oh, this solution I gave actually work. That feeling of um, oh, ah, I am good. <laughs> it's always there. So you feel you feel fulfilled and happy after giving a particular solution that works. Okay, permit me to say sometimes it might not work. Oh yes, don't worry. But keep keep at it. Keep at it. Oh, wow. Wow. I am happy to you that you even give that kind of answer. And when you say that we like looking for problem that 
I mean, problems and finding solution to them. I'm like, uh, it's like you chose Nigeria even before coming to this world <laughs> because we have plenty <laughs> in the country. So uh, there's. Before I ask my second question, I can see. So Falake is asking. She let me read a comment. She said, oh, you can it. see it's too cool. from my okay. grading sheet. How can you search for say the highest score across the school and return the corresponding name for it? And you can make use of your your V lookup from it too. Then first of all, if you want to find the highest, you know we just said from those that are seventy below and those that are 70 and above they should be you can go on and you can reduce it you understand you can say several to they should be a1 they should be a2 they should be a5 just like we have b1 b2 b3 in jump okay they can't really they can't speak they can't they can't speak they can't talk to me yeah so you just you you give it the you continue like that like see you say okay let the, the people that are between 90 to this or 90 uh -huh. then from there you can run a v lookup of that particular particular person that got the highest or you find the highest number you can find the highest number from there let's say max using the max formula equals to maximum then impute where that particular uh, the cell the cell range or the column there it will give you the maximum of those numbers there then from there you can find out i actually have a class right now oh you have another class to go to yes exactly by five. Oh, okay let's let's even round up now thanks very much and so the last question was to ask you that uh, what advice do you have but <laughs> I don't know. Is this something you can give an advice to anybody starting out now and then we end the session or we should end it right now because you've actually finished. Thank you. OK, advice for someone that is interested in data analysis. First of all, what is your passion? Are you what? what why do you want data analysis? Is it because everybody is doing it or you don't want to do it because you feel the field is crowded because i keep hearing that i want to do data it's just that everybody's doing data analysis everybody is doing everything no? everybody's doing everything everybody if you want that's the thing the moment you say i want to start software engineering just go and browse you find out that every, most people are in software engineering so that's it you must first know your passion what do you want what do you want if you if you're able to find that by all means go into it don't 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 feel that okay uh, i'm not good with math none of us are good with this the, the thing is see this x everything you are learning if you don't go back to it again you will still forget it so it's an everyday thing you will always need to come back learn and learn this thing i'm doing today i have to go and relearn again you understand so it's not something so don't feel like ah especially when you go on linkedin you see everybody bringing this you'll be like ah I'm not, I'm not doing anything in my life. Ah, these people have gone far. Let me tell you, nobody has gone far. We are all learning. So we're always in the learning phase. So don't feel, don't feel intimidated by what you see out there. Everybody's learning. So just giving your best, but know how to. If you are the type that, you know, okay, you can't learn based on, let's say, self pace get get an accountability partner someone that will spoil you not know, someone that and uh, you you both of you are not accounting anything get an accountability partner if possible get a mentor that's sometimes it can be very difficult because trust me everybody is busy well everybody's looking for money so you might not get you might not get a mentor you might but you might not so don't put your your all your eggs in one basket that i need a mentor before i start i was looking for a mentor i did not find a mentor so i had to mentor myself and by the way you start getting people then connect with like-minded people on linkedin search for those that have gone ahead check their success story and always go back practice 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 that's the way to be perfect so that's it if you are interested please give wow. in your best give in your all wow thanks a lot thank you so i will say thank you to everybody and thank you especially to victory we end the session now because you need to go and our church shared your LinkedIn in the chat, so people, uh, you can connect with uh, with Victor. Yes, again. those are actually that that wants to ask more questions because my mind is already I'm a valid, so yeah, you can yeah, drop yeah, your okay. questions there. Yes. I will I will respond to but you. I'm not. We need to even let you go so that you will not be late for your. Thank yeah. you. I'm ending the session now, so we can let our special guests go join our other meeting. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye.
Thank you, Victory. Thank you.